from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from our donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario, in honour of his sister, Teresa Burton, in celebration of her 93rd birthday today. The Daily TV Mass ministry is made possible by the generous contributions of all our donors and in a special way by our monthly donors. For all of those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are facing significant transitions in their activities, their health, relationships, or finances. Our thanks to all of our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have celebrated the Paschal festivities may by your gift hold fast to them in the way that we live our lives. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Since Paul had appealed to the Emperor, Festus sent Paul to Rome. When he came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. He lived there for two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. The word of the Lord. just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his gaze examines human beings. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. And his soul hates the lover of violence. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteous deeds. 
the upright shall behold his face. The just will gaze on your face, O Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he was raised from the dead, Jesus appeared to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias and indicated the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to Peter, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that the disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel continues with the, our Lord's last resurrection appearance and the focus of our reflection shifts from yesterday's conversation between the risen Jesus and St. Peter now to the figure of St. John, the beloved disciple. Here, we note that our Lord's words in today's gospel lead us again to a deeper understanding of discipleship, inviting us to follow our Lord, to be faithful in our devoted and loving service of God and neighbor like St. Peter, to follow our Lord on the way of the cross. But the example of the beloved disciple, this disciple whom Jesus loved, calls forth in us at the same time a deep mystical abiding in God through the power of the Holy Spirit. First of all, when we consider St. John, the so-called beloved disciple, in the gospel that bears his name, we see that although he's one among a whole series of characters in the gospel of John, he emerges in many ways as a model disciple. At the Last Supper, he's described as reclining his head on the sacred heart of Jesus. And not only is he among the witnesses at the empty tomb of our Lord on Easter Sunday morning, but is the first who said to see and believe. The commentators do well to point out that the beloved disciple is one of among a larger cast of characters in the fourth gospel. John the Baptist is the voice crying out in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord. St. Andrew brings Peter to meet our Lord. Jesus tells Mary and Martha that he is himself the resurrection and the life. And while Peter has difficulty accepting Jesus' suffering and death, Thomas struggles to understand the glory of the resurrection. Nicodemus is a spiritual seeker who visits Jesus, but does so by night. Pontius Pilate is caught between the darkness and the light. Indicted by the truth, again the commentators observe, he emerges as the patron saint of smooth compromisers, washing his hands as he denies what he knows to be true concerning the innocence of Jesus. Judas is the traitor who turns his back on the light, 
walks away from the light out into the darkness. Now, to paraphrase one of the modern commentators, if in Nathaniel there is no guile, if in Thomas there is no fear, in the beloved disciple there is no misunderstanding, but only clarity and vision. It is the beloved disciple who shows us what it means, again, to always remain close to the sacred heart of Jesus. It is he who shows us how the Holy Spirit gives us the grace to see and to believe and to continue do doing so in the midst of the roar of the world. St. Peter, the beloved disciple, Mary, the mother of God, all said yes to the will of God, yes to God, yes to the infinite mystery calling out to them, a resounding yes as well to the struggles and to the sufferings that go along with following God. They were faithful to their yes time and again through whatever misunderstandings, through whatever disappointments. I'm reminded here also of the struggles of Jacob in the book of Genesis, who said to struggle with beings both human and divine. Jacob is not afraid to struggle with the mystery of God and receives great blessings as a result of entering into that process. At the same time as we consider the disciple whom Jesus loved, the beloved disciple, today, Our Lady Saturday, the gospel invites us also to a broader reflection on the new spiritual family that Jesus forms at the foot of the cross. A great early Christian theologian, Origen, once said, indeed, no one can grasp the meaning of the Gospel of John without having leaned his head on Jesus' chest and without having received from Jesus Mary, the mother of God. For uh, let us remember that again, as Jesus is dying on the cross, he says to Mary, behold your son. And he says to the beloved disciple, behold your mother. Therefore, giving to us a great gift of Mary's spiritual motherhood. Here, Saint Pope John Paul II comments that at the foot of the cross on which he was dying, the one whom she had conceived at her moment of her yes at the Annunciation, Mary received, as it were, a second Annunciation. Woman, behold your son. Thus she who became the mother of God with her yes to the angel became the spiritual mother of humanity as she stood at the foot of the cross with the beloved disciple. We would do well then to reflect personally upon, upon this great gift that Jesus makes to us of Mary's spiritual motherhood when he says to the beloved disciple, behold your mother. Again, Pope John Paul II reminds us that Jesus expressly asks you to receive Mary into your home, to welcome her, to learn from her, she who kept all these things, pondering them in her heart, referring to that inner disposition to listen, to the attitude of humility, the generosity that singles her out as God's first collaborator in the work of salvation brought about by Jesus Christ. John Paul adds, Mary will be to you a spiritual mother and train you and mold you until Christ is fully formed in you. As the church teaches us, ultimately it is through Mary that we're drawn to her beloved son, Jesus. Mary is the model of holiness. She is the font of holiness who unites, as the church teaches us, and mirrors within herself all of the central truths of the faith. Mary exemplifies all of the virtues that the Christian must cultivate in the heart of the church in its life and in its mission. Again, St. John Paul II observes that a Marian note is assigned by Christ himself to the entire church, and into the spiritual life of each disciple, a Marian dimension is infused. Here, in simpler terms, we can say that the color blue should be a predominant thread in the overall fabric of our spirituality. One theologian points out that Mary, by her inspiring example, continues to draw the faithful closer to Christ and through her powerful intercession, the Blessed Virgin Mary continues watching over the church. As we continue to celebrate this Mass, then let us pray for the grace to nurture always in our hearts a true devotion to Mary, to draw out the practical consequences for our own life. Let us entrust ourselves, consecrate ourselves, our families, our work, our city, our country, to Mary's powerful intercession, asking for all of the graces that we need and for all that uh, the, the graces that those who have asked for our prayers are in need of. And let us pray that like the beloved disciple, 
we may always remain close to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, abiding in the love, the light, and in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Let us now make our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, asking him to hear and to answer our prayers. We pray for Francis, our Pope, for Thomas, our Bishop, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the Apostles. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for peace in the world. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord for the intention of today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those facing significant transitions in their activities, their health, their relationships, or finances, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those intentions, we remember now in the silence of our own hearts. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes. When we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Receive us to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit coming near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for the divine sacrament, since the Spirit himself is the remission of all sins through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up into heaven in their sight so that he might, might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Hear in your compassion our prayers, O Lord, that as we have been brought from things of the past to new mysteries, so with former ways left behind, we may be, we may be made new in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Untried, 